Well, it's a, I'm glad everybody came and thank you for taking time out of your day and listening in on our vision and our mission at the Native American Achievement Center. Um, my name is Sunny Day Rilbert. I am an enrolled member of the Crow Tribe. I'm also a child of Big Lodge clan. Um, my mom is from Fort Belknap and we're also part Nest Purs. Um, I graduated here in 2007 with an elementary degree, went on to teach elementary for a couple years and I decided I needed to go to um, graduate school. So I went to University of Oregon, got my master's degree in secondary education and I also got another master's degree in educational leadership. Um, I have two beautiful children. I have a 19 year old and an 11 year old. Um, I grew up here in Billings on weekends. I would go stay on the um, Crow Reservation where I spent a lot of time with my grandma. Um, I call her my Kala. Um, she is going to be 85 in October and she's been like a huge piece in um, advising and mentoring and so I'm always last night I called her and I was telling her about my plan this week and um, I just always go to her anytime I have any or if I need any ad advice or anything um, my crow name is raises good children I was named that when I was nine years old um, by my great grandma Lucy Rilbert and in Crow Way um, when the parents ask to give um, their child an Indian name that person really has to pray about it and it's a process and so you really kind of have to reflect on what good deeds you're at right, um, throughout your lifetime and Lucy um, she was a great mother great grandmother and she named me Raises Good Children. So I've all, ever since I've gone in and decided to go into the education field, I, that's my passion, is helping our Native students succeed. And so just being that mother and caretaker, I always think of helping our Native students as being that support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about, um, I'll just kind of talk about like where, what I've done. Um, I worked a lot with the Bureau of Indian Education. I helped um, contribute to curriculum. Um, I sat at tables where we were deciding on where millions of dollars were going towards and looking at a lot of our reading and um, proficiency scores. So I have a background in that. Um, I love um, data. I'm just a data nerd. <laughs> um, and then I also served as the director of Indian education for the Ronan School District and I served in that position for over five years. So I, I know how to implement any Indian Ed for All in any lesson I have. I think math has always been the toughest, but I, I always feel like that's the funnest, especially when you're incorporating culture into a lesson. So my position here at MSU Billings is I'm the Director of American Indian Outreach. I've been in this position for a little over a year. It's been kind of interesting. My second day of work, I was put on quarantine. So <laughs> I didn't get to get that full experience. And so our biggest piece is we have, our vision is dedicated to provide the best support by empowering our Native student population in the higher education realm. I'm just going to click it. Um, we have two locations. We have our main campus location, which is located at 2630 Normal Avenue. And then we have our city location, which is in room B008. Um, we have our project coordinator and our Native Success Advisor. We're also going to be hiring um, for a graduate assistant and then we also, I just wrote a grant for a VISTA position and that person will be starting November 11th and a lot of their position will be focused on retention and recruitment. Um, 
throughout this year, we've received a grant which was geared towards sharing information. We have a sweat lodge here at the main campus and we partner a lot with Billings Urban Indian Health. We have a men's and women's sweat and that takes place on Sunday. And so we usually post that on Facebook, but not all the time. It's kind of like um, if students are wanting, if they're interested, we share that information or we'll get notified Friday if they're gonna do a sweat and then this, some students will show up. Um, this year, I really thought about my experience going into college and how we could, when we're bringing in these Native students, how could we see them succeed? So I really reflected a lot in how my experience was. And a couple of years ago, when I was going to school at MSU in Bozeman, um, I had to stay there during summertime and I had to leave my family and the hardest part was leaving my kids. And so I get into the storm and I check in and this was just a couple years ago. I had no idea what to bring to a dorm. I didn't know if I should bring towels, sheets, like nobody gave me a list of what to bring. And I bring just a little bit of stuff. I didn't bring a TV or it was just interesting. So I stayed there the first night. I got up that morning. I went to class and I got done with my class and it was dinner time and I came out to the commons area and I never felt so alone. I noticed there was all these various groups eating together. And, um, my pizza arrived so I met them at the front door I got my large pizza and I sat there at a table by myself while everybody was mingling together and they were eating and cooking together and I never felt so alone and so I really thought about that and I was like I could see why a lot of Native students leave after like the first year or even the first couple months so I decided it would be neat to create an indigenous living community. And so right now we have four dorms. Uh, we have native students in there. I hand selected what native students would go in there or what students of interest wanted to be in that section. And so I have a RA, I meet with them. Um, lately it's been like every day. <laughs> but our plan is to meet once a week. Um, we have about 40 Native students, and so my biggest piece is bringing home here. And so we have beating events. Um, next week we're gonna be having, we're gonna be hosting um, the Hulu Reservation Dogs, and we're gonna have um, pizza and watch Reservation Dogs. <laughs> and so that will be fun. And then um, I allow them to cook in the kitchen and they make dinner. But I think the biggest piece is making it comfortable here so they're welcomed and they know that um, this is kind of like their second home. And so what I also do is I use a mongoose platform and I send, so out of those 40 students, I'll send a random text and I'll say, hey, meet me at Stingers at 9 a.m. I'll buy you coffee. I want to do a quick check-in. And so that's like a biggest piece. I know they're pretty busy, but just buying them that cup of coffee and checking in and making sure that they're getting connected with faculty or financial aid or getting rid of any holds and just knowing that they're being successful is kind of like my passion, just making sure everything is met on that end. Um, this summer, we held our first Indigenous orientation. We had four sessions on that. I brought in Billings Urban Indian Clinic. They did an informational session where they talked about um, counseling, talking circles, Medicaid, uh, what services they offer. Um, then we also brought in Let's see who else did we have there was another one Rocky Mountain tribal leaders and we did a piece on budget and how to budget and how to look at your financial needs analysis 
and we fed them, we did a lot of icebreakers, we had a lot of students coming from um, reservations that were outside of Montana, a lot from Pine Ridge area, um, Navajo Nation, and so it was good to really kind of like bring down, down those walls, get to know each other, have fun. This was one of the pictures. So we had Margaret Campbell from New Student Services. We always open it up with a cornhole tournament. And so that really kind of like gets everyone laughing. And I had no idea how to play it, but I tried instead of throwing it at the hole, mine went up in a tree. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not good at it. Um, part of this is, so with those four sessions, I really get to learn a lot about um, where they're coming from and what worries they have. So that one-on-one -on -one really helps. And so far this year, we've had one of the highest increase in first year Native students. And so we did a press release on that. And I really had to think about how can we support those students coming from um, tribal town, whether it's Crow, Lodgegrass, Prior, all the way to Fort Peck or Poplar. And so we, I partnered up with Academic Support Center and we hired a peer navigator and this person will work two, well, 10 hours a week. And their whole primary focus is to focus on our 50 American Indian students that are first time freshmen. And they're kind of gonna be like the cheerleaders of those students. They're gonna make sure that they're attending class, that they're um, meeting with faculty, and that they're connecting with academic support center. So that's our huge piece. And we have a program that helps us with that. And then they also go through um, workshops and trainings through Academic Support Center. So I'm pretty excited about that because the person that we hired is going into cybersecurity. So he knows a lot about <laughs> the computer and spreadsheets and all the technology. So I'm excited. Um, this year we also received another grant where we were able to travel to various schools and share information about MSU Billings and the Native Center. And we traveled, this is a picture of Little Bighorn College. We catered and we gave, we had the chancellor attend that. We had about 50 people attend and it was good. It was interesting because they really, they opened the doors. There was a lot of people that attended, a lot of faculty, and they haven't seen, they ha there wasn't that partnership in the past couple of years. So it was good to sit down with them, hear about their programs, the need for teachers and people that are going into the healthcare field and how we could partner and create that two plus two program. So that really helped. And then also talking about how can we support and prepare those native students that are leaving tribal colleges. And then here's another picture. Um, this was last September when we were having an arrow tournament. We're gonna, we'll have another one in October, thanks to Yellowstone County Museum. And then this is another picture. Um, we held our first graduate honoring and we gifted them Pendleton stoles and then we had a barbecue. We had roughly, I wanna say about 50 graduates, but only a few could attend, so it was good. Um, the chancellor attended and vice chancellor. At our center, we offer academic, financial, personal, and cultural guidance, mentor support. Um, we have the All Nations Club, which meets about every two weeks. Um, the picture up on the top, we have de-stressor walks, which is fun, right around like midterm time or fall time. We'll just take a walk to Rocky and then we'll turn around and we'll have um, light snacks, nothing too heavy.
And then here we have the Vice Chancellor. Um, she came to visit some of our students a couple months ago. So this is where I'll go into our strategic plan. And this is basically our plan for recruitment and retention, but also that empowerment piece for our Native students. And so part of this, we have, on the first one, we have increased retention among Native students by providing academic support. Um, starting next year, what we're going to do is every year that Saturday we host an American Indian alumni breakfast. And so we're going to track that information because we really need our Native alumni. Um, we need their support and we would like their um, advice and kind of have that mentorship. And so what we're going to do is we're going to provide student support by creating a peer mentorship for a lot of our freshmen and sophomore students or pairing them up based on um, if they're in the business program or in the education field. And so that will be our plan this coming year. Um, also, um, provide, we'll, we'll also be providing lecture series, um, student engagement. We do monthly luncheons at the City College. Um, we do movie nights, just anything. We Last Wednesday we did a bring your own bead work and that was fun. We had a lot of students from like the Fort Peck area. And so after we had our Friday's event with the beading panelists last Friday, which we hosted three famous beaders, uh, we had a couple elf, um, ladies they were elders from the community and they want to volunteer their time and show our students how to be. And so I'm excited about that. And so they're going to come to our next Wednesday event. And it's so interesting because even when we have these events and we're inviting the community, I visited with one person that traveled from Wyoming to our panelist and um, they mentioned that it was so neat to come on campus because they have never been on this campus before and they were suffering from depression and just to sit down and loom and hear the panelists talk about um, their struggles and their grief and how they turned to beating was so helpful and so now that student is gonna start applying for FAFSA and they're gonna um, go after their bachelor's degree in um, counseling. So I'm excited. Um, so he's he's been asking, he reached out to me. And so it it's just these little things that have an impact and that's like a huge piece and just that little story really helped. Um, so another thing is um, we also have in regards to recruitment is we're reaching out to a lot of the high school or counselors and so our piece for that is any senior that's interested in applying to MSU Billings we visit with them if they need help with applying for FAFSA we do that if it's admissions we noticed this past year when we were granted um, money to cover our Native Success Advisor, we noticed a lot of people were requesting paper applications for admission. They weren't wanting to do the computer admission application. So it was pretty interesting, the whole process of that. And so anyways, we've, we work a lot. Um, a lot of people, when they're applying, they don't have access to Wi-Fi. So our Success Advisor was meeting them at Hardin Library, Little Bighorn College Library, or they were even meeting them outside of McDonald's to help that student apply for FAFSA or college. Um, we also are partnering with Billings School District on their family nights to educate them about what's here. That biggest partnership, they have about 2,000 students Native students in the Billings School District. So that that's like our biggest piece is partnering with them and getting those students into college 
and just with it, I help a lot of grandmas and moms get their senior kids re registered and help them apply for their tribal education scholarship. So it's good to give them information because some of them, it's, it's really overwhelming, the financial aid piece. And stop me if you guys have any questions. <laughs> um, another thing is we have, so we have that financial aid night. We also partnered with New Student Services and they have a comm flow. So this comm flow, it's say we have 10 students at Lodge Grass and they fill out like a postcard that they're interested in attending MSU Billings. That little postcard goes into a comm flow and we're able to contact those students and we could send them like a cool video, we could send them an email, we could say, hey, I'm Sunny Realbird, I heard you're interested in MSU Billings. So a big piece of that is in our department's goal is to reach out to them personally and visit with them, whether it's text or over the phone or through email and answer any questions. And so that's really been like a huge piece. And so I'm learning a lot about how the comp flow goes, but QE at New Student Services has been a huge help. Um, we also have to create various resources. Um, if I have a student moving from Crow Agency or Lame Deer, we wanna make sure that they're connected with the right resources whether it's um, daycare needs or if they need help with rental assistance. I have, I share all that information if they need money for a book stipend. And um, we'll also be, I'm also working on an emergency fund if students run out of gas or they just need a gas voucher, they'll be able to access that. Um, Part of what our Native Success Recruiter does, and we're hiring for that position right now, so if you know of anyone, please share that information. Um, what they do is they help with FAFSA, um, they share scholarship information. Our biggest piece is establishing a partnership with Little Bighorn College and Dole Knife. And so part of what we got out of the meetings when we took the Chancellor there a couple weeks ago was, um, Doll Knife and Little Bighorn College wants to see more of a presence of MSU community on their campus. So our focus is to be available and attend various events. And so our Native Success Advisor will be there working with their advisors or their faculty to help them transition to a four-year college much um, smoothly. And then our next one is um, providing engagement with the community and private and governmental stakeholders. So another piece is um, we partner a lot with three affiliated tribes in North Dakota, the Mandan, Hadassah, and the Rikura. And um, we have a great support system with them. Um, they're always wanting to know our numbers, how many students, um, based on percentage, how much we have increased in regards to retention and enrollment. So it's interesting that we're pretty close with them compared to like the surrounding tribes, but it's, a, it's very helpful because they really helped us a lot in a lot of um, like our powwow events and our alumni breakfast. So another thing is, um, we're also working and looking at student data, and I'm hoping my next screen has the data information. Yes, it does. So this morning, I was meeting with our enrollment, and last year we had 294 American Indian students, and today we're, we're at 302 Native students, so we've had a 2.7 increase. And so um, City College, we just had a press release on that and we saw a 21% increase of Native students. Um, 
Native students accounted for 10% of the city college enrollment. And so our biggest piece when we're writing this job description is to have that presence there, to make sure that our advisors are checking in with those students, whether it's if they have books or if they need help with financial aid, just anything, just making sure that their needs are being met. So if you look at this, we have one of the highest percentages based on race. Um, for undergraduate, we have about 180 students. City College, 87. So when I first started, it was like working on ground zero. So I had to, going from teaching middle school math and high school math, I really had to get my name out there. So I did a lot of calling. I called all the way up to um, Browning, um, the Black Blackfeet Tribal College. I knew a lot of people at SKC, which is located in Pablo, um, because I lived there in Ronan. Um, I, knew Dr. Yarlett, Dr. Little Bear from Dolmai, so that was a pretty easy um, call and to visit with them. I think the biggest partnerships I'm wanting to work with is Fort Belma, Fort Peck, and Rocky Boy. Uh, we have our tribal colleges. Uh, tribal colleges in Montana infuse about 76.2 million into our state economy. Isn't that interesting? How high that number is. Okay, another piece I wanted to get into. I presented um, last year and one of the questions that really made me think about and made me reflect was um, someone asked me, they said, okay, I'm a professor, I'm here at MSU Billings, I'm new to Montana, I don't know a lot about the um, reservations around here, I don't know about tribal etiquette. If I have a Native student in my class, how could I work with them? And so it, I didn't have an answer. I was like, let me get back to you. <laughs> and when she was asking me that, um, the vice chancellor heard me heard her ask me that and she said when you come up with an answer I want you to present it to all faculty <laughs> and so I was like okay I could do that <laughs> and so what I did was I have a strong um, network especially in elementary um, all the way to higher education and I asked them I said how could we support our Native students? And these are some of the comments that I got. Having a willingness to understand and listen to our cultural beliefs, values, and norms. Attend a cultural gathering of any kind and report your visit to your class or with other educators. Learn about local history, local tribes, and current issues that are affecting Native people using the correct terminology and make sure you aren't being stereotypical. Examine your methodologies when teaching native content. Pros and cons, approaches are harmful. Create space for localized indigenous knowledge holders in your classroom. Make room for a discussion of diversity and cultural competency in all subjects and topics. Present research aimed towards evidence-based practices in indigenous communities instead of generalizing all population populations and building meaningful relationships. And so another great resource is um, cultur culturally responsive teaching and the brain beyond the asterisk. This one is the top two are here at the library. I have the Beyond the Asterisk in my um, car. I've been reading that. Um, a third one is when I was going to University of Oregon, 
um, we were both pregnant at the same time. And so her name is Leilani. She teaches at University of Oregon and hers is Indigenous Children's. And that is an awesome book. I think it just came out last year, but we were both pregnant at the same time. And then we had our baby like a week after finals. And so we were always the mom sitting in the back of class um, <laughs> holding our babies. Um, but that is basically our plan and how we support and empower our Native students. And I just want to thank you guys for taking your time and out of your busy day and listening to um, how we support our Native students.